Hey everybody and welcome back. So in this video we're going to cover variables. Now we did briefly create variable in the last video but what we're going to do is we're going to remove that for now. We're going to get rid of this commented out text as well. We're going to just tidy up our codes a little bit. We don't need these commented areas now. We know what each of these things do. So there we go. Lovely nice clean looking text. So as you've noticed I've been very very particular about making sure that my indents are correct and that's because using Python and RemPy indents and spaces and um, case sensitive um, variable names are very important. If you type in for example a capital E instead of a small e there uh, it won't work because capital E and small e would be two separate things so we have to find what small e is but as far as RenPy is concerned capital E does not exist. So what we can do is inside the start loop we can start declaring some variables but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a new block of code called variables at the bottom which will allow us to declare our variables or set up our variables within this block of code so that we haven't got reams and reams of text before our important bits of code that happen in here. So the cool thing about Python and RemPy is that literally you can declare any kind of variable um, without having to well actually declare it first so if you were type, if you were programming it in for example c++ or c sharp you would have to declare your integers as like f r h t and then you'd have to type your semicolon um, like that. But in RemPy, we don't have to. All we have to do is if we want a new variable, we just say pound sign tells us that there's a variable coming. And we can say um, player score, for example, player score equals zero. And then RemPy now knows that there's a variable called player score and it's variable and its value is zero. And we can use exactly the same thing for player name. And we can say that that's going to be a string which hasn't got a value yet, but it, it's, it's a string. Now it doesn't matter if I don't declare that as a string. I could just simply type in zero or I could type in false, a Boolean expression. Uh, and in the very next line, I could say player name equals Dave. And RemPy would be quite happy to just change between one and the other. It doesn't matter. You don't have to stick to any particular variable type. Um, you just tell RemPy what you want each variable to be, and it will quite happily accept that. Um, and that's as simple as that. Now, when we're actually programming in Python, when we create a Python block, we don't use the pound sign. So we would remove these pound signs from the beginning of the uh, from the beginning of the declaration. But obviously, what we're coding in RenPy at the moment, so we use the pound sign. Now, if we want to actually check the value of that variable, we would type in if player score equals equals. Now the reason we use two equals is because RemPy will be looking for different variations. So for example if I want to say if the player score is less than or equal to 10 then do whatever is in this tab block. So we'll just put pass in there for now. Oops. But what we're saying is that if RemPy is the same as equal to 10, I know that's a bit of a roundabout way of explaining it, but this is the simplest way to understand why we do that, because we're saying greater than equal to as well, but we're saying equals equals 10, then we will just simply put score is 10, which is as simple as that. But obviously we know that this is never going to happen because we only call this block of code once we say 
at the very beginning of our code call variables we say that there's a variable called player score which is set to zero there's a player name which is set to false but then it's reset to dave so we'll remove that simple bit of code there so we're going to say the player name is dave and we can simply remove this block because there's never going to be a condition where that's true inside this block of code so that's that so we've now set these two variables so how do we actually use them what's the point in having variables in the first place well if we were like if we would like to use the player name for example inside some text so if we wanted eileen to actually use the variable player name instead of just saying hi dave we'd use square brackets player name like so and we're going to test that now to make sure that it still works uh, yep, so we go to our project, we're going to launch it, start, hi Dave, how is your day? So as far as the player is concerned, they, we don't see anything different there because they, you know, because the player name is Dave, but if we quit, we can change the player name to whatever we want, so we can call it Bartholomew de Granville, the third let's save that we go back in we launch that project start and as you can see by Bartholomew to Grumbill the third how is your day so that's that's how we can put that variable in there but of course it doesn't just work with uh, strings we can do it with text as well so let's just say at the end of I'm having a good day your score is player score. Now, because I'm using uh, Atom, it's filling out a lot of this, or it's auto-completing the brackets and things for me, but just make sure you close the square brackets as well. So let's see if that works. I hope that was great. Your score is zero. There we go. So I'm just going to demonstrate what happens if we put in the wrong Thing. So if let's just say I forget to put a capital at the beginning of player score there, this will help you fault find in future. So we come in, we're going to start a game. Hi, how is your day? My day was great. Boom, error. I'm glad you had a good day, your score is. So as you can see, this is our trace back, but at the very top it tells you key error player score and then as we come down here we can see key error player score and that's what that's just saying to us is that this doesn't exist there's no such thing as player score with a small s so this is again a good way of demonstrating that the being careful to make sure that you get your case sensitivity in your variables is very important and that's really all there is to using variables at this basic level we can um, add for example uh, if we wanted to, let's just say, we're also going to add to this block of code. We're going to say player score plus equals new line, which is a backslash n, which is the same as basically pressing the return, the enter key, carriage return, uh, Dumbo. So we've added this to our player. No, we need to change that as player score. We need to change it to player name. And then we're going to say your name is still player name. So the very last line of code should show us what happens when we add this to our player name. Bartholomew de Gronville the third. How was your day? It was great. So we've clicked on the top option. I'm glad you had a good day. Your score is zero. Part of the good day block. This code is the end of the start block. As you can see now, but your name, the player name, is now two lines of te text, name there, a carriage return, and then the word Dumbo. So as you can see, that's what this happens. So we can add to the string in the case of a string, and we can add to player score simply by typing
plus equals one or however much you want to add to it but obviously we don't display the score again after this line so we would have to move that to the top of the block like that and when we run the code now the score is one so that's simply adding to our variables. There's different types of variables as well, which we're going to cover in later videos. But this is the most basic implementation of variables that you can possibly use. It enables you to uh, create different player names and give them a player score or any kind of things like that, which, you know, a lot of use there. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching.